And so uh, today, I want to talk about the synthesis of a broadband impedance matching network. So broadband impedance matching problem uh, we face on the very first day that we took our class in school on RF and microwave engineering. Uh, even when you go around the Smith chart, it's a very tedious uh, process. And uh, when you go to uh, broadband matching, matching over 25% fractional bandwidth, uh, it can take days of uh, calculation just to get the component values and then lay, laying it down onto the schematic. So a more efficient uh, approach is to use uh, automatic uh, circuit synthesis where all of these calculations are done uh, with a click of a button so that you can then choose many different uh, topologies and see whether they're suitable for your uh, matching so if we also uh, employ direct synthesis technique, we can also include uh, freq uh, frequency filtering in addition to impedance matching. So let's define the, the problem that uh, we want to tackle today. And it's basically you know, doing broadband impedance matching into complex frequency dependent impedances. So uh, as an example, we have an antenna whose uh, impedance is going to vary over frequency and is complex. And then we need to uh, feed that antenna into a transistor that is unstable and also non-unilateral. Non-unilateral means that whatever you do to match the output is going to impact what you, uh, what you have on the input. So these, the input and output has got to be designed simultaneously. You cannot do them independently because of the non-unilateral uh, characteristics of the device. Then uh, this is then followed by interstage matching network that then come, uh, <clears throat> feed into the next stage of a transistor that is defined uh, not by an equivalent circuit but by its S parameters. And then uh, this transistor that then has to be matched to a load. So, and we want to achieve a 40% uh, bandwidth uh, at centered at 2.5 gigahertz with a 20 dB return loss. So this is quite uh, a challenging problem. So we're going to see how we're going to tackle this kind of uh, problem. So to, to dig in a little bit more, uh, we define the antenna with an equivalent uh, RLC circuit where the resonant frequency is 2.5 gigahertz. Then uh, this antenna is then uh, matched to a two-port uh, as parameter uh, representation of a transistor. But unfortunately, this transistor is not so easy to match because it's unstable at the 2.5 gigahertz uh, center frequency. So we've got to find a way to stabilize that. And then we've got a problem of interstage matching network. Now we have two devices <coughs> whose impedance is going to vary uh, in a complex fashion over 40% fractional bandwidth. So how do we de design that uh, interstage matching network? And then also the output matching network needs to be designed because both transistors are non-unilateral. Whatever you do on the output of each is going to impact what you do on the, uh, the input of each. So we got to uh, take into consideration all of that. So what are the strategies uh, that we have to tackle this problem? So here I summarized on the left the nine categories of uh, matching network that we can use to do this kind of matching. So, but you know, in the interest of time, I don't have uh, all that time to describe every one of these. Uh, but generally, the first four, uh, probably you learn that in school, LC pi, LCT, you know, quarter wave transmission line and uh, double single stop matching. So this is generally better for narrow band matching. This is what we learn in school. But once you go to broadband matching, they don't teach you that. <laughs> So, uh, and that is why we're going to use more sophisticated uh, matching network like LC bandpass, pseudo low pass, and the equivalent of the LC pseudo low pass would be the transmission line distributed version of the pseudo low pass. So, um, so this is the strategy that we can use. And when we uh, want to finally realize this transmission, uh, sorry, the impedance matching network on a circuit board, you might want to think about using a microstrip, right? So therefore, the, tra the transmission line version of the pseudo low pass matching uh, network topology is very attractive because we don't need to buy LAM components. We can implement it in microstrip. Um, so we we'll show you how to do that. 
Of course, it's easy to say, if you're gonna look at the books on any one of these ma uh, matching network calculation, it's a lot of math and a, a lot of equations that first you gotta find some way to calculate them and then associate that with a, a component on your schematic. So just trying to do that can take you days. So therefore, you know, it's very easy to say, but it's very hard to do unless somebody has already coded all of those equations into uh, button clicks. And uh, this is what we have done, and this is what we call uh, impedance matching network synthesis. And the good thing is, since we have coded all of these equations into single button clicks, we can uh, test all of these nine different types of uh, matching network to see whether they satisfy our return loss uh, criteria uh, over the bandwidth that we want to match. And I'll show you an example of that. So I'll go quickly, you know, I, I don't have a whole lot of time, but LC Pi T matching network has certain uh, characteristics. If you want to know more, please come and visit me at my booth, the, uh, the <coughs> circuit synthesis uh, demo that I have. But basically, we'll be using uh, LC band pass matching and then LC pseudo low pass matching network. So a little uh, background to what this technique is about. So uh, in pseudo low pass or uh, pseudo band pass uh, matching network, we model the, uh, the, the impedance termination at the input and the output with an equivalent RLC circuit uh, or the series L RL circuit or a parallel RC circuit. So once we have the input and output impedance model, even if you had S parameters, we'll model that uh, with these RLC circuit for the termination. Once we do that, we then fit a shabby shaft uh, network in between uh, to, do, to, to first start with a matching uh, transfer function. So from the poles and zeros of this shabby shaft transfer function, we can then extract an equivalent circuit, uh, and in fact, a, an exact circuit out of this transfer function. Okay, so as we know for a shabby shaft uh, response, the poles of um, the transfer function is constrained on an ellipse in the S plane. And then the zeros is what we determine through optimization. So when we do that, we can match over a very broad band of uh, frequency without, um, with a measured response of your input and output impedance. So, so for example, as parameter measurement, or in, as uh, Larry said in the previous one, we've got load pool, uh, a requirement for specific impedance over frequencies, we can also determine that. So, and, and the uh, distributed version is when you have the LC network already synthesized from the, uh, the shabby shaft uh, response, we can then transform the LC component into distributed equivalent component. So the C will be uh, transformed into open stubs and the L will be transformed into series stubs. So this is what we're gonna do. So now, for the theory, this is what we are doing. So we gotta define all of this problem to the synthesis uh, uh, routine that we have. So let's start with the, uh, the transistors. We gotta make sure that the transistor that we are matching to are unconditionally stable. So we look at stage one on the left. Uh, we got to make sure that the stability factor and the stability measure uh, has one, could be more than one and zero, respectively. In the case of stage one, uh, the stability factor is not more than one, so we got to stabilize it. So uh, a simple way is to add a little uh, resistor to the collector of the stage one transistor. Stage two is okay, uh, it, and it's stable above 1.75 gigahertz. So since we're matching centered at 2.5 gigahertz over one gigahertz bandwidth, that stage two is ready to be matched. So, uh, so we have stabilized the transistor. Now we, let's look at the antenna load. We gotta define the frequency over which to match. So this is from two to three gigahertz. And, uh, and in our synthesis uh, implementation, we have a way to represent uh, the input. So the input in this case is an RLC circuit, but you can also uh, define it as an S parameter file if you've got that measured. Okay, then uh, I'm gonna use my favorite TRL pseudo low pass uh, inter uh, interstage input and output impedance for it to be synthesized. 
The reason why I use this is because I can easily then represent it and implement it on microstrip. So, and so the, the synthesis routine allows us to choose from the nine different categories of uh, matching network topologies. And with a click of a button, we can then evaluate whether it satisfies our performance uh, criteria of minus 20 dB return loss input to output uh, <coughs> over 40% uh, fractional bandwidth. All right, so this is where we then insert our stabilized device, which is a design. In this case, it's an S parameter with a resistor. So it can be your custom schematic. Stage two is an S parameter measurement. It could also be an X parameter file or a model taken from Modelytics. So uh, in the previous uh, micro apps, Larry talked about all the different models. But if you want to use the model, you've got to match them. And this is where it comes in, all the impedance matching. And this is what we do. Oh, oh, and of course, we've got to be aware of the Fano's uh, matching limit. For reactive loads, uh, there is a limit to how, how, um, what is the minimum return loss that you can get out of it. So uh, you can read about that. And it's basically determined by uh, the loaded Q versus the Q of the load. And it, in, uh, in an intuitive understanding is the more reactive the load it is, the harder it is to match over a wide band, meaning the return loss that you get will not be as low if the load is very reactive and it's all determined by Fano's limit. And you can read about that. Okay, so uh, when we apply all of that with a single click, this is what we've got. Now we see, and this is done within uh, less than one minute. <laughs> the, uh, the input matching, the interstage matching, and the output matching network are all automatically synthesized. We can then transform the ideal uh, distributed uh, matching network into a uh, microstrip. So we have a variety of uh, synthesis capability to transform the ideal uh, electrical transmission line into microstrip, into strip line, inverted microstrip, any of the implementation technology that you want to choose. So of course, in the transformation from the ideal transmission line to microstrip, there's some discrepancy. And this is where optimization comes in to correct for the, the, uh, the discrepancy. So this is what we get. So we can, you can see the input and output uh, return loss. In fact, this is the, uh, the quality of the match. We get 20 dB of uh, return loss uh, across 40% bandwidth. So, and then when we uh, lay that down on the PCB, that is the microstrip matching network. So if you time all of these, you can do all of these under one hour. So if you contrast that to uh, what you need to do by hand on the site, it'll probably take a long time. So uh, that's the end of my presentation. Do you have any questions? I know we only have one and a, one and a half minutes. If you've got more, please visit me. I'll be at the Keysight booth. I'm uh, responsible for all the synthesis product that we have in ESOF. Do you have any questions? If not, then uh, thank you very much.